She is a uh, amazing being, and I just want to tell you a little bit about her. So this is Tamara Fleming. I'm the author of Upswing, 80 Mindful Practices to Shift Your Life from Blues to Bliss. And this is my fun uh, interviewing series that I'm doing with amazing people. So we have today Brenda Reese, and again, she's a forgiveness coach. And Brenda, I know Brenda, uh, have known her for years and have watched her go through many, 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 many tra uh, pieces of transformation. She has been through uh, abuse, addiction, divorce, major health issues, and surgery. And most recently, she has been through brain surgery. She lost her vision in her left eye as a result of a brain tumor uh, when? Last year, year and a half ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago years ago now so we kind of were kindred sisters on the blind eye of the left eye series and <laughs> now we're healthy and we are back on track with our callings and she is here to share her brilliance she is a certified coach in radical forgiveness among akashic reading rec uh, record reading and numerous other things that she's uh, dove into delved into in her spiritual journey so welcome brenda thanks for joining us Thanks, Tamara. <laughs> so what we are going to talk about today is self-forgiveness. It was really, I know you're focusing on a lot of that because you believe it's the core of where we need to start from. And it's the, in, in my work with Upswing, it's really the essence of everything. And I very on purpose did not uh, put too much on forgiveness in Upswing because I figured that you could cover this topic very, very well. So Take it away. What do you think is important about self-forgiveness for us to hear? Thanks, Tamara. And I, and I think that you did do some really good, there's some really good information about forgiveness in your book. So I really appreciated that. And what I think, when I think of forgiveness, you know, I don't think about resentment and anger. I think more about it in a more expansive way. So it doesn't just encompass, you know, my past, it encompasses, encompasses my present and my future. Because when I get to, when I get to let go of the past, right, when I get to really heal through the resentment and the anger, then I get to be present so that I can cultivate that environment that I really want to live in so I can create the life I want. And so to be able to do that, though, I do have to take a look at some stuff that's showing up in my life. So yesterday, we, I was talking to Sean Mishore about that, and we were talking about the past. So what, you know, I think it's helpful. There are so many varying degrees of digging into your past. What degree to, of it is helpful and what degree of it is harmful in terms of your opinion with forgiveness work? That's a good question. Um, and what... Well, you know, I think that it goes back to the fact of take that, what's showing up in your life. So when we had some, we, we all have some patterns and beliefs and behaviors that, that are repetitive. And most of us kind of know what they are. We may not have addressed them. Taking a look at those, I think, is extremely helpful. Okay, for instance, you know, um, I kept getting into the same kind of relationship, right, with the same kind of guy. Same content, different package, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look different, but it was the same kind of behaviors. It was the same emotionally unavailable. They, you know, had a lot of anger. They were more abusive. And so there were some things showing up in, in that. So I kept picking the same stuff. So that was really important and helpful for me to take a look at, oh, wait, I'm the common denominator. <laughs> what is there for me to see? Now, I didn't know it at the time, right? It took me a while to figure that out after I went through my third divorce and kind of go, oh, wait, I got to take some responsibility. So I think that is helpful when we feel kind of stuck, when we feel those things. Now, it can be harmful, I think, when we've had a lot of trauma, some really, really deep trauma. And when we try to go after that ourselves or with some people, educated in that area, 
then I think it's, it can be more harmful because we have to come at it in a very methodical, very conscious way. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So what I just heard you say are spotting where you have patterns, where something keeps repeating itself and becoming aware enough to concentrate on what it is that you want to drill down on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Good. exactly. I know that you have, um, you know, let's just talk about you for a second, you know, and the power of self-forgiveness in your life and what it's done for you. Mm. Tell us a little bit about you. Thanks. Well, you know, I have, uh, like I said, I had a little pattern that I did not know about. But what I was feeling was for me eight years ago when I went through the, my third divorce and I was feeling a lot of shame, a lot of guilt. Um, you know, I had to take, start taking a look at what was showing up in my life. What, where had I come from? Where did I want to go? And my past is, um, has a lot of the abuse that we hear about, you know, it's, it's got the abandonment. It's got the neglect. It's got the sexual abuse. It's got physical abuse. It's got addiction. You know, I drank alcohol for 20 years uh, to try to numb out my feelings a lot of codependence and you know a lot of people pleasing and rescuing all of that being the martyr i did not know it at the time um but that was my life and then i kept pushing through i kept pushing through because i needed to prove to the world that i was worthy enough to be here mm. now that i had i did not know this i could not put words to it but i just felt it and my bot, I suffered for it, right? Basically is what happened was because when I could put words to that belief, when I could put words to why am I, why am I pushing so hard? Why am I afraid of myself? Why am I listening to everybody else's information and not my own? You know, why am I jumping from relationship to relationship? Oh, I'm scared to be by myself. Oh, I'm scared to know who I am. But if you tell me who I am, then that must be true. And so I had all of that. And so what happened, you know, was it finally caught up with me in the sense that I kept asking. I kept asking for, okay, I'm feeling like crap. I'm crying every day to work. I keep getting now this pattern that I had in husbands is showing up in my job with my boss, you know, about always, um, always not being good enough, always needing to prove myself, choosing another secretary, another woman over me, right? So that showed up and my body started to break down. And so that's where I started in on, oh, I need to do some really heavy duty forgiveness work. I started outside of myself and went inward. Okay, so, you know, a lot of people will go after it in therapy or something like that, and it may not start with forgiveness work. They may start, you know, on a round loop to try to identify what it is that's causing the problem. You know, so do you believe that with, if, if you just do forgiveness work up front, that it will bring up the things that we need that kind of unlock the door or, you know, release the dam of things to heal? Does that, does that a, get that question? Yeah, I do. No, thanks for saying that. Because um, in the forgiveness work, and I think this is where a lot of people start feeling a little funny, is what is it? What is forgiveness work? Right? And so when we can, when we can go into those thoughts and feelings and patterns, because that's what the forgiveness work does, we don't jump right in and go, oh, you need to forgive so and so because they did this to you. So you just need to get over it. That's what I grew up with, and that's what I was struggling with. My ex-husband, I went through not such a good relationship and marriage, and what? You're asking me to do what? So in the forgiveness work, it is where we get to flush out our story, right? I listen for the pattern and the beliefs. I get to do some really deep listening to what's showing up, what's there. So then we can flush it out and say, hey, how does this resonate with you? Does this resonate, this pattern resonate with you? This belief resonates. So we bring them and, and then we start taking and doing the work on those. So, you know, it's not just about jumping into forgiveness, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's about yeah. what's showing up in your life and then flushing it out carefully because each person is different. 
So do you have a way for people to get clear about that list of things that they may want to focus on to forgive? Yes. So what is really helpful is actually what's really helpful is to start with the forgiveness list and to be able to start and write down, you know, all the people that kind of irritate you, right? Because in that is a mirror. In that is going to, we're going to see a little pattern or a little, you know, I talk a lot about patterns, but it's what helped me so much. It's what really gave me the aha that I needed to heal. And so when we, when we do that, then we see a pattern. We kind of see a timeline of how it showed up, how we felt, right? So this is a process that I take clients through. So how did I feel? What was the feelings? Can we put that? And then some people automatically know, well, I don't feel worthy. You know, mm -hmm. and so, but, and, but I can help people put some words to some other things like, oh, wow, I'm afraid of being seen. I'm afraid of rejection. You know, I feel like, like for my sake, it was like, and for several clients, it's like, oh, I need to really work on proving myself because I don't really want to be here either. If I'm not going to be feel worthy and feel like people are going to accept me and allow me to be seen. Yeah. So, so when you go through the work with people, do you find that they know what it is or do you really have to help them excavate it? Well, it's really, they don't know exactly what it is. And, and the, you know, the, I'm going to say the fun part because it's a fun part for me is, 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 is helping people get to those ahas right? For forgiveness. What we really want to feel is freedom and peace. Really? That's what we want. But what we feel is restricted, constricted. We feel heavy. We get irritated easily. We get depressed. We, we, you know, have addictions, right? To kind of, why am I not feeling good? Why am I not really embracing life? And so to be able to do that, we've got to dig a little bit. And because it's not, right there on the surface a lot of times. And like I said, when, when, I, when we look at some number sequences or patterns, it's pretty amazing. Like people will go, why am I in a relationship? I've had several clients go, you know, they're either in a job or relationship and they change every 18 months to two years. Mm. Ooh, cycles. Story, yeah. yeah. And in the stories, we flush that out because we go into that because they don't, they don't realize that until we, I start asking questions. And then they realize, oh, my sister was born when I was 18 months. My brother was born when I was two years old and I all of a sudden didn't matter, but they don't know that. And for me, it was a pattern of five. When my dad left at five, I didn't know that, but every marriage was a multiple of five. My jobs was a multiple of five. It was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So do you think that, so that's really interesting, cycles and rhythms and patterns. Um, do you think that people uh, in the forgiveness work, you know, do you think they, do you think you can kind of survive, I guess, and, and uh, not do forgiveness work? And what would be the ramifications if you did? Well, I think we all can survive. It's, it's whether, you know, you want to thrive or not. That's the key because I was surviving just fine. You know, I thought I was going through life. I was doing the same things, right? I was going to work and I was going home and I was doing my little patterns and I was doing my things that I thought were making me happy. So yes, I believe that we can, but the difference is, is that there come, there comes a point, Tamara, that part of us, our soul, our spirit goes enough. This is not why we're here. I'm not here just to, just to feel melancholy. I'm not here just to survive. We are here to feel everything and to see everything and to expand into, into who we truly are, our purpose, right? We're all asking, who am I? Who's my purpose? And what's my purpose? And, you know, and I think it, that's really what we want. We want to feel alive. At least I did. And I know other people that I work with, that's what they want. They're going, Brenda, I feel just stuck. My life is okay, but I feel stuck. Yeah. Not, not really awake, you know, like super awake. Yeah. Right? 
Well, and right. you know, I know that too, when I went through the dark night of the soul, that when I came out of that, I had to forgive myself for that too, on top of everything else that I had gone through. <laughs> right now I'm coming out going, holy cow, until I could find a new definition for how powerfully good the dark night of the soul actually was. I mean, when you're in it, you don't want to know that. I mean, it might be helpful to know that, but when you come out, it's like, oh, le lordy. I needed to do that to myself so that I could see things, so that I could grow, so that I could, and oh, honey, I forgive you so much, <laughs> right? Right? And oh, then there's God. nothing to forgive because we're all, this is it. This is the journey. And, you know, what do you have to say about that? You came out of your brain surgery and, and finding out that your body was taking the toll. What, how did you face that forgiveness wise? Oh my gosh. So, you know, and, and that's the interesting part as you and I have shared is that, you know, I was doing the forgiveness work when I had the brain tumor surgery. So I had to come out of that and go, oh my gosh, you know, because it's like, what have I done? You know, and that was a whole nother level of healing, a whole nother, nother level of self-acceptance and a whole nother level through the shame, because that's what that is. And like, oh my gosh, am I such a bad person that this would happen to? It's like, what the heck? And so I, I think for me too, there's been little, little kind of dark nights of the soul along my path right? Where I kind of go down and I, I, I do some healing. I got to step back. And, and as, as we all are growing as human beings, that's going to happen. But coming out of that brain surgery, because I had a back and a neck surgery two years prior. And it's kind of like, wow, what am I creating? Where am I at? And looking at where does victim consciousness show up for me? Where am I still holding on to the fear? Oh, and then being okay, being okay with that learning, but kind of like I talked about cultivating that environment of acceptance and allowance of me going, okay, this is all a part of the journey. It doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It means that it's a wake up call for me. So what does it mean? Mm -hmm. And then be able to flush that out and know that my walk through that, because I was just wanting the end result. I just wanted, you know, I've always gone through life just like I wasn't enjoying the process. That's why we're here. You know, that's why we told my body to feel, to sense, to, to know, you know, just to have this experience. I wasn't doing none of that. I had an end result and I was going from A to B. Well, that was part of my lesson that I got to learn through that brain surgery was, Brenda, slow down. Where's your joy? Where's your bliss? Where, where do you want to show up fully and expand into where do you want to do that? And, you know, and it's been a really cool journey for two years, you know, like you've gone through this really diving deep and coming out and diving deep and coming out. And because life doesn't happen to me, it happens for me. And I didn't get that before I started doing this forgiveness work. It was happening to me, you know, things. Oh, that's just how it is. That's just who I am. You know, some people just have all these things happen to them. No, there's a purpose. And if I can really change, which we've talked about my perception around all these events and all these things, then I can take the responsibility that is, is needed to be taken. And then I have the control to change going forward. Yeah, that that's huge so what you just said is that you took responsibility for yourself and your stories your perspectives and what was really going on right yes yeah he yes. hang on to your hat when you start doing that because right because uh taking responsibility pretty much sucks <laughs> <laughs> but it also sets you free you know, when you get moving in it, because the universe goes, you got it, girlfriend. Now keep moving, keep moving, keep doing what's next, what's next, what's next. And, you know, I, I, I want to ask you this before we wrap up. Um, does forgiveness have to take a long time or can it happen in a holy moment? 
Mm, I like that question because it doesn't have to take a long time. And then sometimes it does. <laughs> so it can happen in a holy moment. And, and, you know, I just shared real quick, I had that happen, you know, two months ago, as I stepped away, as I was going through another reinvention of myself, another deeper layers, I had that, I had that holy moment. Now, sometimes, you know, it, working on mom and dad, I've, it's taken a little while, right, to kind of uncover some stuff, but it doesn't take a long time. It's not, I'm not talking years, and I'm not talking diving deep into the, into the crap. We don't have to do that. But when we can take a look at something and change or shift the perception around it, it shifts the energy. So what happened was, you know, when I looked at my childhood just a little bit differently, when I went from, wait a minute, there was some lighter moments wait a minute, it wasn't so dark because that's all I had. I don't have a lot of memories of my childhood because of all that. But when I shifted that perception, I remember I called you. I'm like, Tamara, oh my gosh, it, it's here. It's in that holy moment. All of a sudden, my body felt better. My mind freed and I was in this blissful state. And that has stayed through with me. And it's like, this is really strong and it's really powerful moved mountains for you. You know, uh, there's that biblical saying, you know, mustard seeds move mountains. And it's true when you get into this level of transformation, you know, that you have, you can have the level of, of knowingness, awareness, and readiness, because I think that's a big part of it, to literally shift your life through one move one decision one one you know you can what i call pop yourself through sometimes yeah. not all the time but sometimes you can do yeah. that so not all the times yeah sometimes it takes time and and because you're right it's our resistance right it's when we bump up against that resistance which i have a lot um and pretty strong willed and you know and and that willingness it really comes down to willingness and it takes time to cultivate because i i've been pretty tough Myself. Oh, really? <laughs> I won't say a word. <laughs> you haven't noticed that. No. <laughs> no, not at all. Well, okay. So for our listeners, let's, um, let's wrap this up. And if you were, I don't know if you want to say your forgiveness steps, or if you want to just send a really clear message about forgiveness or something that's encouragement, encouraging for the listeners, what would you say about self-forgiveness? Mm. Well, what I would say is when, like, like you hear, is to really feel how you want to feel about yourself, not just the affirmations, not just the words, but really feel how do I want to feel and really take that in, write it down, write it down, because that starts the journey right there. That brings awareness to you. When I wanted to feel peace, when I wanted to feel joy, I wanted to be in a state of joy and knowing that I could have that, but not knowing how, that's how I started my journey. So just start simple, make your forgiveness list, start with that because we have to start outside of ourselves first so that we can see the mirror, so we can see what's showing up in our life. And then write down, how do I want to feel? Who are some people in my life that I really, really love and emanate how I want to feel? So take the characteristics, not who they are, not comparison. But go ahead and just those qualities, those characteristics that you want to embody because you have them because you're noticing them. That's big. And then take that and go how and then start to really feel how you want to feel every day. It's like, I want to feel joy. Okay, joy. What memories do I have that bring me joy? Or how can I create that joy in my life? And then this, the other part is just, you know, kind of take responsibility for your own life. That's really key. Take responsibility for your actions because in that is the healing because we can look at this shame and the guilt differently when I'm willing to not blame and I'm not willing to make excuses when I can bring it back in and go, wow, okay, I can change that if I choose to. I can get out of this job if I choose to. I can get out of this relationship if I choose to. And I think those right there are enough. And, and it's just like, and then just, Really, really focus on looking in the mirror every day and saying something nice about yourself. It may not be I love you because I couldn't go there. When I first started this, I couldn't even look myself in the eyes. 
I could put my makeup on, but I couldn't look myself in the eye. So just look in the mirror if that's what you can to say something nice about yourself. That worked for me. I love you. You're so brilliant and bright. You know, I know that you are on a bit of a sabbatical right now. Is that right? Yes. So when are you um, back online and when I'm going to put your uh, email, your uh, piece up here in a second, but I, I want to make sure here we go. There we go. Let's see if we can get it. So there we are, both of us, BrendaReeseCoaching.com and UpswingBook.com. That's both of us. And I, um, I, so when are you, you back? You're going to Spain, which is a very cool trip. And when yes. are you back available for people to start working with you? By the end of September, early October. Okay. Hey, very cool. But they can contact you now and potentially do a pre-conversation? Yes, they sure yes. can. Okay. So BrendaReeseCoaching.com. And we happen to know that you're just going to have an incredible year coming up. There are all kinds of things. Did you want to say something about your B-O-O-K? <laughs> oh, they <laughs> hint. They hint, yes. I know I've got a I've got a book coming out uh, within the next month or so, and I'm out and just to kind of get people started on their journey, I'm really excited about that, and it's going to be called Forgive Yourself, and just to help you start, and then uh, there's going to be a workshop in November, November 11th, uh, that I'm going to have in the Bellevue area, and then where we're also working on some online like classes and some different things that people, whoever, wherever they are, can um, access more readily. So that's coming. The, the two immediate ones are the book and then the workshop. And then from that, uh, we're going to just kind of go off. And I'm excited about offering things for people just to get more awareness out there about forgiveness and how we can really start loving ourselves and enjoying ourselves and those people around us. Is that November 11th, did you say? Yeah, 11-11. Okay, ooh, 11-11. Okay, and that's in Seattle, right? It's going to be in the Bellevue area. Bellevue, Bellevue area, sorry about that. Okay, so that is super cool. And uh, if you have never worked with Brenda before, then you should consider that, especially if you're in the area. Um, because she's a very dynamic instructor and can take you wide and far and deep in a very safe and compassionate way. So my dear, I love you so much. And um, I, this video will be posted for a long time on Facebook so people can watch it and we'll share it around. And um, I just want to say that you are in a brilliant, extraordinary light and it is such a pleasure to know you and your soul. Oh. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye for, for now. Bye. <laughs>